Welcome back. I'd like to talk a little bit now about uh, parents' role during a game. The student athletes, your children, ask basically three things uh, during a game of us as parents. Those three, th three things are as follows. Number one is for us to model poise and confidence during a game. It's really important that we act appropriately during a game. They'd like us to be there. They want us to be present. But they also don't want us to embarrass them or embarrass those around them or embarrass the team and the coach. It's really important as you're sitting up in the stands watching your son or daughter participate in athletics to act appropriately. Act like an adult. Not yelling at officials. Encouraging your child and encouraging the team. You're there to support and to encourage. Not to officiate, but to support and encourage. But model poison confidence. They look up in the stands and they look at you, what do they see? They see this after, the, after they made a mistake. Do they see you looking at them all mad and mean? They're six, seven, eight-year-olds. They're children. Are they seeing you really upset with them? Are they seeing you going, are you kidding me? That's a terrible call. Are, they all, are you just all over the officials? Are you yelling at your own coach, the other coach, the opponents? Or do you have poison confidence? Are you the model that they need? Another note, they shouldn't be looking at you during the game. If they're spending so much time looking at you, there's another sign you haven't released them to the game. They should be paying attention to what the coach is saying. They should be paying attention to what's going on in their game, not looking at you to try to tell them what to do or to look over for your uh, approval during the course of the game. Second thing that's real important to happen uh, during a game that the student athletes or the athletes, your children, tell us is they want you to focus on the team. Most parents have binoculars for their children. There may be maybe a football game or a soccer game with uh, 11 people on your team on the field, but most parents have their binoculars right on their child. Children says that's not what they want. The kids say, watch our team. I'm here playing for our team. We're out here having a lot of fun with my friends. Watch the game. Enjoy the game. Learn the rules of the game so that you can support our team. Some, some uh, schools now, or some teams, have gone to this basic rule of thumb in youth sports that, as a parent, you cheer for every person on that team except for your own child. Let all the other parents cheer for your children. Get excited about your children. You cheer for the team as a whole and cheer for everybody else on that, that team. Let the others take care of cheering for your children instead of having binoculars on your own child. That's coming from the kids. That's what they want It's for you to focus on the team, not just hone in on everything that they're doing. Uh, last thing, and this is important, this is one of my own uh, little pet peeves as both a parent and, and a longtime coach, both youth and, uh, and collegiate level sports, is this. There should be one instructional voice. I don't mean just one voice, but one instructional voice, and there's a difference. I want you to put yourself in the position of that five-year-old child, little Johnny or Susie, or it could be your eight or ten-year-old child, put yourself in a position. I, I, I've coached quite a bit of college basketball and coached quite a bit of youth basketball at this point as well with my own son. Put yourself in a position where Johnny's got the ball at five years old. He's not sure what to do. There's somebody up in his face. He's scared. He's nervous. He doesn't know what to do. You as a parent are yelling, shoot, shoot, shoot. And all of a sudden, the other kids on the team are all looking over here saying, pass, 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 pass me the ball, pass me the ball. And then the coach is yelling, Johnny, drive by him. Susie, go by. Susie, dribble, dribble, dribble. Now he's hearing pass, dribble, and shoot at the same time. In the meantime, he's got another kid up in his face yelling at him and screaming, and he doesn't know what to do. He's scared, he's nervous, and he's got three different instructions. One instructional voice. Don't confuse your child. That's really important. That's not fair to the kid. No matter what he does, he's going to disappoint his teammates, the coach, or the parents. That one instructional voice, by the way, should be the coach. The one instructional voice is the coach, and that's really important. Now, tying this together, there's four roles in athletics. You can be a coach, a fan, a participant, or an official. Choose one. As parents, your role is going to be to be a spectator in this case, unless you are the parent who is the coach. Choose one of those roles. Now, there, in different sports, there are different rules. Uh, there are different, uh, different situations that make this difficult 
as a parent, as a, as a fan, as a spectator, to always model poise and confidence. And, and I'll give you a couple examples. One is proximity to the playing surface. If you're in, in basketball, you may be in the front row and you're right there next to the court. If softball, you might be right behind home plate. The flip side of that is in football, you may be 40 or 50 yards off of the field. It's a little bit more difficult to model that poise and confidence when you're right up next to the action. And also when there's a lot of subjective judgment within the game. For example, football, basketball, uh, lacrosse, etc. There's a lot of subjective calls going on with officiating. And you're also right close to the action. If you find yourself in a circumstance as parents where you're overly emotional in these games and you're having a hard time controlling yourself, you want to yell at the officials, you want to yell instructions to your, uh, your child and to your team, move yourself away from the circumstance. Rather than sit in the front row, go sit a little bit, a little bit further up in the stands, remove yourself from that situation. It's going to be, it's much more difficult when you're right on top of the playing surface and there's subjective judgment by the officials. The flip side, there's other sports where you're just simply further removed from the, uh, from the action. And there's barrier sports. Barrier sports such as, uh, such as swimming, such as tennis. And there's, there's a lot, there's some circumstances where there is uh, not so subjective, such as much more objective judgment. For example, track. You got a stopwatch, you know how fast it is, there's not a whole lot of arguing with the stopwatch. Swimming, there's not a whole lot of arguing with the stopwatch again. It's very clear who's first, second, third, for the most part, in swimming and track, etc. There's not a whole lot of time to argue about calls in those circumstances. So there's various circumstances to make it easier or more difficult in terms of your participation as a parent, your emotions uh, in terms of getting involved. But remove yourself a little bit from the playing surface if possible. Uh, if you're finding yourself getting overly emotional into games. But overall, as parents, remember, this is about making the best experience for your son, your daughter, your children that they can possibly be. So model appropriately behavior. Choose one, one role. Make sure there's one instructional voice. And also focus on the team, not just the sp your child. Real important. We're going to go ahead and proceed and talk about after the game in just a moment. Thank you.